Merupakan education service provider atau perusahaan penyedia layanan pendidikan yang mempunyai beragam program untuk meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan suatu institusi. Program-program tersebut adalah Evaluation of Achievement atau EA, EduJoy, EduNav, EduOS. EduCamps, EduIllation, OCB, dan ISPO. Evaluation of Achievement atau IE merupakan program yang fokus pada sistem penilaian, evaluasi, dan pelaporan untuk para siswa dan guru guna meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan di sekolah. EduJoy merupakan program pembelajaran berbasis video untuk mata pelajaran di sekolah dengan konten yang menarik, menyenangkan, dan bermanfaat. EduNav merupakan sistem informasi sekolah atau SIS berbasis web yang dikembangkan untuk memudahkan manajemen sekolah dalam mengatur berbagai hal serta memudahkan orang tua dalam memantau prestasi anak di sekolah. Program ini bertujuan untuk menciptakan iklim pendidikan yang berkualitas. EduOS merupakan program pembelajaran intensif yang fokus pada persiapan, simulasi, dan evaluasi siswa untuk menghadapi Olimpiade Sains Nasional atau OSN. EduCam merupakan program peng pengembangan keprofesian untuk para guru dan administrasi sekolah dengan mendatangkan trainer dan instruktur dari luar negeri. Eduilation merupakan program yang fokus pada pembentukan karakter siswa tingkat dasar dengan menggunakan permainan interaktif yang unik dan menarik. OSEBI merupakan organisasi yang mewadai pengembangan berbagai kegiatan di bidang kesenian dan bahasa Indonesia. ISPO merupakan organisasi yang mewadai kegiatan olimpiade berbasis proyek penelitian dalam bidang biologi, fisika, kimia, teknologi, lingkungan, dan komputer. EDUVERSAL, sukses is the sum of details. Oke, okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everywhere of you. All right, first of all, let's just, uh, you know, open this uh, session webinar here. But before we just go on directly, I'd like to ask you all, would you like to tell us where are you from? You can just write down here in the chat box, which city or which country are you in right now? Okay, let's see. Wow, we have got Indonesia, North Sumatra, Kyrgyzstan, Pata, Indonesia, Myanmar. Okay, we have got Sumatra. Wow, we have got Has, <laughs> Depok, Tangerang, Cianjur. Wow, wow, so many places there. We are gathering together here right now, right? Okay. Wow, cool. Wow, Banda Aceh, Myanmar. Wow, we have got a couple of People here are, who are from Myanmar, Bandung also, Kalimantan Selatan, Philippines, right? We have got Grogol, Kazakhstan, right? Okay, Laos too. That's welcome, right? Okay. Okay, so we have got uh, here the things that we are going to discuss here. We have got the, uh, what is it? Title, right? How to improve teaching Right. Before we just go any further, let me try to remind you that we are also streaming this webinar on YouTube. You can find it on our Eduversal channel there. <clears throat> and also at the end of the session, there will be a link to be shared so that you can just fulfill it and you will get your certificates. So what is the suggestion here? Stay here till the end of the webinar and get the link and then just click. You will get your certificates, right? Okay, and at the end, in the end also, you're going to write down questions if you have. And uh, after the webinar, after you know the speaker will deliver the the materials, we are going to have a question and answer session there, right? Okay, before we just go to uh, directly to the main session here, let me try to introduce myself. My name is Anir Stu, and I'm from one of Eduversal Associated Schools, Pribadi Depok. And here we have got our speaker, Dr. Dushan Alievich, 
Shamato, right? Before we just go to, you know, just uh, introduce him, let me try to read a uh, brief information about him. Mr. Uh, Dushan Aliyevich Shamatov, I'm really sorry if I pronounce <laughs> the name, okay, <clears throat> uh, is an associate uh, professor in the Graduate School of Education at Nazarbayev University. And uh, Mr. Dushan also received his Master of Education degree in teacher education from Aga Khan University. Pakistan, and he obtained his PhD in education from Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto in Canada in 2005. His doctoral thesis was titled The Beginning Teachers Professional Socialization in Post-Soviet Kyrgyzstan, Challenges and Coping Strategies. He has experience of conducting research and consultancies in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and Yemen. Dr. Dushans also has got an area of interest includes educational reforms, rural education and equity, teacher education, curriculum development, education quality, and student assessment. Well, this is the interesting part, everyone. Mr. Dushan also is a winner of the NU Inaugural and you Master Teacher Award in 2020, Leadership in Teaching Award in 2019, and Innovative Teacher in 2018. In 2019, Dr. Duishan got a Medal Excellence in Education from the Ministry of Education and Science of Kyrgyzstan Republic. In 2020, he got a Medal Altin Sarin from the MOES of Kazakhstan, right? Okay, let's welcome together everyone. This is Mr. Uh, Dushan Aliyevich Shamatov. Here we go. This is your time. Thank you very much, dear my colleagues. I, I am extremely pleased to welcome everyone today. I have worked and studied in South Asia, Central Asia, and North America. And, and therefore, I am pretty much familiar with many educators in this part of the world. But unfortunately, I haven't uh, visited uh, Far East or Southeast Asia in my career. I have only visited once Thailand for UNESCO mission. Other than that, I have met a lot of excellent colleagues from all countries like Philippines, Indonesia, but I haven't traveled to that part of the world yet. Maybe one day when we, we will finally overcome these difficult days, I will be able to travel. Well, having said that, let, let me share my screen, dear colleagues. I have prepared the slides, but I will not, I'm not going to read every, everything on my slide. So as much as possible, I will try to be brief, but I will also be very happy to make it interactive so that you also get opportunity to ask questions, also to answer to my questions if possible as well as to write in the SMS chat. Sometimes in the past, when I was asking people to speak uh, by unmuting the microphone, sometimes people will, will for, would forget about microphone and there would be a lot of chaos. But I asked my colleagues from Indonesia to help me that by mistake, if anyone forgets about to, to unmute their microphone, they will be able to help me. So let's go, my colleagues. This is my slide. So my education, I got my bachelor's degree, so-called five years uh, diploma degree from Kyrgyzstan, and I became an lang English language teacher. And then in my career, I traveled to, to Pakistan where I did a degree in teacher education. So you, you can see this Aga Khan University, master students from different parts of the world, namely South Asia, East Africa, and Central Asia. And this is a nice library full of excellent books on education. So I can see some of my friends who are who studied in Pakistan, so they, 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 I, they, I am, I'm sure they, they recognize the library. Then I, my travel, professional travel or professional journey took me to Canada where I did my doctoral degree as I was kindly introduced. Here you can see some of my friends, maybe their faces look more familiar to some of the participants. The, the colleagues are from, I think, one colleague uh, who is the second from the right is from Singapore. Two colleagues are from Hong Kong and one is from Pakistan. 
So in the other picture, maybe some of you can recognize the gentleman uh, who is uh, in the middle of the ladies. He is a uh, Professor Andy Hargreaves, a very well-known, renowned professor who worked at that time at that time in Canada. So this is a PhD group uh, with with, a with other students. So then, briefly about my work experience, dear colleagues. So I am just sharing a few ideas to introduce myself further. The, I, I worked in Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan, and then again in Kyrgyzstan. Then currently I'm working in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, these are two neighborly, very friendly countries. So I am now uh, in the, in a, among my friends and neighbors in Kazakhstan, although I am originally from Kyrgyzstan. Well, I also did a lot of consultancies in, in, in Central Asia, South Asia, also Yemen for different organizations. Here you can see one of my really professional highlights where I enjoyed my stay in Yemen, a city of Hajar in the, in the north part of Yemen. So then, then, then I think the, our, our moderator already has done this. I don't think we need to repeat it. At this moment, I was going to ask you because I was quite impressed that participants were from different countries. And I think it's a, it's a great privilege for me to be a teacher and to, to be surrounded today by the teachers from different parts of the world because we need to celebrate teaching. And because my talk will be about this. So, and I am sure uh, everyone brings wealth of experience today. Well, well dear colleagues, May somebody, somebody has joined, joined with forgetting about the microphone and we will identify that person. Dear colleagues, I, 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 have a, I have a puzzle for you. Maybe I can also try to unmute this colleague. Okay, well. <laughs> let's go. Dear colleagues, this is my, one of my favorite activities. It's kind of a warm up. I don't know whether you can hear or not. I brought a box, but I want you to, to tell me, to write to, to in SMS chat, to, to write to me, what do you think is inside the box? What did I put? Some, I put something in the box. Who, and I want to read from your answers. What do you think? Eraser, marker, ball, pen, 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 many of you, magnet, marble. Very good ideas. Money, no, no, no. Somebody says money, I will not put money inside of this. No, no, <laughs> no. Cubes, candy, no. Shingles, no, candy, not today. Uh, coin, no, coin would sound much sharper. Keys, books, no, book is difficult to put. Okay, okay, colleagues. Let me, let me, let me now st stop it here. This is a paper. Yes, somebody wrote. This is a paper, dear colleagues. This is a paper. <laughs> I microphone that the are weird. Here, this is a this is a paper, but normally I put I don't put just something anything just by mistake. This has a meaning, dear colleagues. I we open the box and now, if we were seeing you, if we we had a meeting face to face, I would distribute the papers clips to you. Now, dear colleagues. I will give you five minutes. Can you please write, make up two sentences by using these words. Please do not change the words. And also you must use every word only once. No word should be left out. Let's see who can make up one or two sentences. Very good sentences with a very good meaning. Let's see, let's see. Education is preparation for life. Okay, okay, okay that's a good sentence. But, but Natalia, you must use all the, all the words. No words should be left out. Complete all of them, please. Education is the life of human. Oh, uh, there is no word human. Please do not, word new, do not add new words. Only these words should be used. Education is preparation for life. Uh, Sapura, that's, that's only a few words. Please add, you need to use all the words. Education is not, itself, is, is, education is not for itself. Uh, I think maybe I, my instruction is not clear. Please, dear colleagues, all the words should be used. No words should be left out. Okay, Jamal, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. That's excellent. I like it. Somebody said uh, education itself is preparation for life. Well, that's a very good. We have two sentences, dear colleagues. There, we have contradictory sentences. Thank you. Thank you. I think now 
I, you, I see that a lot of you are writing. Now, these are two sentences we have got. Now, can you please read these two sentences and choose which one you like and, and why? Please, do you like the first one and do you like the second one? First one is education is preparation for life. The second one is that education is not preparation for life. Which one do you like? Let me see. First, 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 second, second, first. Okay, maybe for many of you are writing first one. I think, I think I th there are many of you first one. Uh, I think both of them are correct because sometimes when we provide education, we prepare our students for, for future. So that, okay, now you must learn mathematics in, in your life, you may use mathematics. Sometimes we tell these things, honestly, but sometimes we also say, no, education is not preparation for life. Just in this case, dear colleagues, all of you are right, but I, I use this word because this is the word of, these are the, this is a statement of John Dewey. Can you read on your screen? Education is not preparation for life, says John Dewey. John Dewey was famous American educator. He is an, he's an author of constructivism. He said, no, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. Now, can anyone please explain? Maybe if Rasto can help me, maybe one or two, two colleagues can even say verbally in front of us. But let's make sure there is not going to be a lot of chaotic noise. Why education is preparation for, for life? What do you think? Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. What does it mean for you? Anyone? You can write or you can also say in front of us. Well, uh, let me try to paraphrase this one. I think this is education. Education is life. And this is not something we have to get prepared for life. Yeah. But instead, it is life itself. How to say this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think like this. So we are not preparing for life by using education. But education itself, life, right? That's <laughs> that it is perfect. That's, the, that's perfect. And I can also see some of, some of our uh, colleagues are writing here. Without education, life is meaningless. I like it. Le live and learn. Lifelong learning. I, I like all of them. Yes. According to John Dewey also, in school, we must not say, oh, lessons should not be boring. We must not, we must not say, one day you, will, you may use this knowledge. Ed peeps, our students are living at school. Therefore, education should be closely connected with life. Knowledge that they are getting should be connected to life. Life educates us. Very excellent statements. Thank you. Now we got the idea. Now I have a few more tasks for you, dear colleagues. Please do not scold me at the end. Of this tuition gives a lot of tasks. This task, I deliberately hide, I had hidden one word from this famous oh, phrase oh, from oh, Dennis. Oh, 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 oh. Dennis Thyssen was my professor supervisor. Dennis Thyssen, can you, can you find out what kind of word is missing from this statement? What is more expensive than education? Any ideas? Please type it. What is missing? Experience is more education. Experience, experience. Nothing is more expensive than education. Good ideas. No, no. Whoa, that one. Kerim, Kerim, Kerim. I, I, don't, I cannot say your last name. Kerim. Excellent. Let's use Karim's word. Please have a look at it. You want the idea? Ignorance is more expensive than education. Why? Ignorance, Jamal is also writing. Ignorance is more expensive than education. Why is he saying this? Ignorance is ignorance. Why is it expensive? Why is my professor Dennis Thyssen saying that ignorance or lack of education is more expensive than education? Anyone can explain? Yes? The word, please pay attention to the word expensive. It's about money. The way Chingles is writing, the, you pay for nothing while education is worth something. I, I like it. Excellent. Chingles is excellent. It can teach us a lot of things, yes. Dear colleagues, the idea of this phrase is that we should not 
we should not be worried about spending money on, ed on education. Education is an investment. Do not just economize money on education. If we, if we save money from education, from our children's education, then it, is, it will negatively affect their future. Therefore, we should never hide any money from the education of our children, from the education of our citizens. That's the idea. Okay, now you got the idea. Let's go further. Nelson Mandela, dear colleagues, everyone knows who is Nelson Mandela. Please, can you now put two words what Nelson Mandela wanted to say here? I just, powerful weapon, which you can use to do what? There is a verb and the noun is missing. Education is the most powerful weapon to change. Oh, Jamal, Jamal Papiva, you are, you are rocking today. To improve yourself is a good idea. Uh, Tahra is also writing correctly. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Without education, we cannot change the world. Education is the solution, dear colleagues. Help others, I like it also. Ora, yes, it's, it's about, but, but Nelson Mandela said, yes, probably he could also say help others, but here in this phrase, he said, change the world. But now you got the idea? I have a couple of more statements. Please be active. Two words are missing. Who are, is the pupil who does not do what? Change the world, now this is another word. <laughs> who is the pupil who does not have education, pay attention, this is, these are good ones, I like. <laughs> but this is, it has another meaning from the Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, Kuan, Kuan, excellent. Sopas, Resto and Kuan, excellent. Thank you. Yes, who is the pupil who does not sopas his master? Therefore, we should not, sometimes teachers will become, maybe some teachers will become upset when their students become very educated, very knowledgeable. But I know majority of the teachers, we become very happy when our students are more successful than, other, than us. And it is normal. We should be happy when our students surpass us. Can, can I know if I have any students sitting here in my room? Akhtelek is here, Jamal is here, my students. And I have also my teachers, Hadith is sitting here. So it is normal in our generation of teachers, our students should be stronger than our teachers. So this is okay. And that's going to be progress in life. Let's move forward. Uh, next one. This is my favorite one also. People spend more money for something than for education. Let's admit it. What do people spend money for? You want them to spend money on education, but sometimes then food, that's a good one, but not, not in this phrase. Lifestyle, fashion, yeah, fashion, Karim, but not in this one. Uh, entertainment, yes, Rahat, entertainment. But also there is another word, let me put it, pleasure. I like it, pleasure. No, people spend more money for education than for education. No, I think that's, that's a little bit tough tautology. Technology, leisure. I think those people who wrote leisure, Pleasure, leisure, entertainment is really for recreation. Unfortunately, we spend too much time for recreation than for education. If, for example, if there is a wedding, there is a famous singer coming, people, I don't know how in Indonesia, but in my culture, people go and uh, give money to that singer, just to honor the singer, and, but a lot of money. But if you want them to buy a book, like, very nice book, they say, oh, it's very expensive. So that's why we should never save money from education for buying books. Let's go, let's go. Nonsense is writing something, I don't know why they are writing nonsense to me or to, to nothing, I don't know, but let's go further. And this is the final one. Maybe I, let's, let me skip one because I think we spend a lot of time on this and I, I, I have a lot of materials. This is Jean Piaget, a famous Swiss educator who said that Education should not be really giving knowledge to students. It should be about creating possibilities for young people to discover them, themselves so that our learners should be capable of finding out new things. So this is the basic idea of the quote. Let's go forward. Now, I think at this moment, I want to switch our attention to teaching. Now, let's, let me hear from you. What is teaching for you? 
when you hear the word teaching, can you write in SMS, please, SMS chat? Uh, can you write SMS in the chat? What is teaching? Just think, teaching is transferring knowledge, excellent. Anything else? Teaching is sharing experience, I like it. Skill, guiding, sharing your knowledge. Teaching is an art, nurturing the students. I like all of them. I think this today, I, I think today is the first time when I have all the teachers from so rich background, I am, I am so excited. Teaching is passion, teaching is guiding. Excellent. Now, learning, improving the potential, experiencing, learning something new, engaging in learning. I think everything that I wanted to say, everything is shared. Maybe, Rastu, we can close the seminar because I think we all, they already know everything. <laughs> okay. Dear colleagues, now let me switch now GS and let me talk about teaching worldwide. And I will give you some ideas from literature. And then, then we, we, we talk about your experiences. First of all, what is teaching? Teaching is many things. Teaching can be looked at for, as a skill, as a knowledge, as some of you wrote, especially from behaviorists. You just learn the skill and uh, you do it and you teach. Teaching is really about constructivism. You, you find out what your students know and you try to build on their knowledge. But also, Teaching is a, is a ecological construct. It's a, it's a skill, knowledge. It's a more of a, you know, psychology of your students. It's a broader notion of teaching. Now I want to mention about like in the globalized world, sometimes we think about teaching as something as honorary, as noble. But unfortunately, teaching can be both. Teaching can be for, against, and despite knowledge society. What do I mean by that? In this, our knowledge society, teaching can be really used for promoting equity. Teaching can be used to bring changes, to improve people's life if teaching use, is used properly. But unfortunately, teaching can be also used to give elite education to elite people by creating segregation, unfortunately. You are really, you are promoting profit by teaching only, some teachers may be teaching only selected people and they are, they are, they are producing more knowledge and then they are gaining more money and that's increasing again the, 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 the disparity between poor and the rich, unfortunately. And also teaching, unfortunately, sometimes can be used as a threat to cultures, threat to indigenous cultures, languages, identity. For example, of course, I cannot speak Indonesian language or other languages. Today we are speaking English because English is the world language. Therefore we are communicating with that. But, but with the hegemony of certain languages, we ourselves should really protect our own languages. Otherwise, otherwise, smaller languages are at the threat of disappearing. Therefore, teaching as much as we like to teach in English, we should also think about our own small languages. Let's go forward. Now, dear colleagues, there are different myths, stereotypes about teaching. One of them is really about teaching, teacher preparation is not necessary. You don't need to prepare for teaching, some people think. No. Teaching, pre teacher preparation is must, and we should spend a lot of time to prepare future teachers. Next one. Unfortunately, many people who has never taught, they think anyone can teach. Anyone can teach almost like you, you are, like some of our compatriots, they think that teaching is very easy. You just come out to the class, to the board, and you just speak, and then that's teaching. No, teaching is an art. And in my next slide, I will show it. And another stereotype about us is that teachers don't work hard. They have long vacations and they complain all the time. <laughs> it, they, they, many people think about us, but I found this excellent phrase. Please have a look at this. This I found recently from my student, Anthony from, from uh, Kenya. I really like this phrase. Why don't you read it and let me know how you like it. Anyone agrees? Anyone agrees? Because sometimes some people who, who don't know anything about teaching, they, they pretend that they're experts of everything. Come on. <laughs> yes, Marzano. I like the word Marzana. I, I, 
Exactly. Agree, agree. Very true. Let's move forward, dear colleagues. Unfortunately, time is flying. 30 minutes are gone. Let me, let me hurry up. Let me, dear colleagues, this is a Schulman's idea from 1986. He said that teachers need to have knowledge base. And just speaking. It is about no, having no subject knowledge. It is the knowledge of pedagogy. It's the knowledge about the learner. It's the knowledge about learning, how learning takes place. It's the knowledge of critical thinking. And it's also learning, it's the knowledge about context and culture where you are teaching. It's about meta learning, about how you, know, you need to have knowledge of research, about how, how to conduct research. And you need to have knowledge of curriculum and general education and other knowledge. So you can see that to be a teacher, you need to have multiple aspects of knowledge. This is not only just, just speaking, as you see. Now, unfortunately, recently, teaching profession has become really, I don't know how it's in, I know in Singapore and other countries in, in Far East or Southeast Asia, teaching profession is quite valued. But unfortunately, in many parts of the world, teaching is not valued. And, on, and here you can see that Andy Hargreaves and others says that teachers' work has become doubled. They work so hard, a lot of work, and they their work has become intensified. And the teachers, generally, they are not paid a lot. They have low salaries. In addition to salary, uh, low salary, they have also to do extra job, extra amount of teaching in order to earn more salary. And the skilling is when, when somebody at the top, at the center, thinks teachers don't know anything. And they start preparing all this curriculum, ready-made lesson plans, and they give to teachers saying, okay, teachers, you don't know anything, as if thinking teachers don't know anything, and expecting teachers, imposing on teachers ready-made materials. And these other things really are making teachers work quite frustrating, a lot of teachers internationally. There, is, there are a few more crises in teaching profession, centralized curriculum, and teachers are blaming for everything, almost everything. And here, Iveta Silva also mentions few things about Central Asia, that teachers' professional status uh, has really declined. Unfortunately, we are experiencing in Central Asia shortage of teachers. I don't know how it's in Indonesia. And teaching profession has become really feminized, but I can see a lot of male teachers here. I am very pleased to see. But unfortunately, in, in other parts of the world, most of the teachers are women. Unfortunately, uh, of course, it's good for women, but they are not choosing this profession for many reasons. And uh, unfortunately, also bureaucratic regulations are used like test scores or ranking in order to discipline and punish the teachers. And I think I may, and as a result, it's, it is often difficult to attract strong young candidates to teaching profession. And, and about, I, think I may skip these ideas. Another excellent idea was shared by Andy Hargreaves. If you remember, I mentioned earlier, I almost bragged that he, is, he was my professor. Andy Hargreaves, an uh, excellent scholar, and Dennis Shirley write about the fourth way. And I don't, I don't think I will go through this because I, I am mindful of time. They write about four ways. And I don't know, you can analyze on your own later on which way your country, your country, your context really stuck. Maybe is it in the fourth way, third way, second way, or first way? And the first one is really about, I think I promise that I will not go through it. My, I, I will share the slides later on and I will share the reading materials. Maybe you go through it. But I think the second way is, is that is that is really about the time of markets and standardization. All these testing competitions created a lot of rankings as a result. Uh, curriculum, prescriptive curriculum are developed. Uh, maybe many contact countries are in this way. So I think I, uh, what happened as a result is that most of the wealthy families started choosing the best schools and the poor schools are suffering further. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of division with this. And, uh, and even the, in this second way, such kind of come into existence as uh, for parents, people started using the words clients, customers, consumers. This is a really market, uh, the, 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 the vocabulary from the market, as you know. Uh, I will just go through all of them now because I will come to the, uh, the final part. 
dear colleagues, well, I have about 20 minutes left now. Well, we need to raise the status of teachers, no doubt. And the teachers, we all with the time, we, we, are, we are fighting for elevating or for raising the teacher status. The, what does it mean? Raising teacher status is about treating the teachers as professionals. We need to be treated as professionals who know what we are doing. If we will be treated as someone who doesn't know what we are doing and you, every time somebody will be prescribing to us, then I think, then what kind of work we can create? The important part is that teachers should not lose their creativity. Well, yes, but please look at this, dear, dear colleagues. We need, we need to fight for raising our status internationally. But here comes my magic word. We ourselves should do our job properly. I will repeat again. We as teachers should do our job properly. What does that mean? If I cannot keep well, if I cannot really inspire my students, then no one will respect me. No parents, no government, because they will think that why are you complaining? when you cannot even teach. Therefore, dear colleagues, I know you are all excellent teachers, but we need to continue, continuously work on our own professional development. And for that, let me share some research ideas. Imagine when, a, a, when parents bring their kids to school, first thing, what do they do when parents bring their children to grade one? When, when they, what, what do they do? Who can write to me? Imagine in Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, parents come to school. They bring their child who is six years old or seven years old. What do they do? What do parents do? Number one, first, when they come to school. Anyone? Any idea? Parents bring their, their child to school. You are a teacher there. What do parents do? Anyone can write in the SMS? Maybe, maybe quietness, complain. No, 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 the first time, their child is coming first day of the school. Tell what their kids can do, okay? They, they, Janat, but right. they will choose their teacher. They will greet the teacher, but they will ask you, who is going to be a teacher of my child? That's the first question they ask. If they know that their child's teacher will be a good teacher, they are happy. If they know that, their child's teacher will be new teacher. They will say, oh, this new teacher, can she teach or she cannot teach? Why my child is, uh, can you make my child smart? Yes, tell our child to behave good. They want to see their teacher. Yes, Ogulnur, Ogulnur, yes. They want to find out who is going to be their child, the first teacher of their child. And they want to, every parent, parent wants to get the best teacher, definitely. Why? These are the, this is the result of, the, of, my, of the research. Please look at it. Students' performance depend on the quality of the teacher. This is axiom, this is the truth. No one can, can doubt it. Look at it, please. Students of, of effective teacher perform four times better than the students of the ordinary teachers, according to Anders and Rivers. So that's why you make a decision. Look at this, please. Read the first one. Imagine if you move the kids from the ordinary mediocre teacher's class to the best teacher's class, it is almost like you are reducing the number of the students by 10. As if in that classroom there were 35 students and suddenly there are 25 students because this excellent teacher, effective teacher, has time for every child. Do you agree with colleagues? The, final, the, the, the next one, a good teacher, this is the test result by Rokov. A good teacher may increase his or her student's performance in the test by 23%. So the role of the good teacher is in very, good, very important. Then here, let us watch. Rasto, can you help me to show this video? And let's watch this video and we will continue, dear colleagues. It's a very interesting video. 
uh, could you put it with the sound also? All right. Oh, would you like to share the link to me? Um, oh, I have shared. Oh, yeah, have education has. It. Yep, got it. Mm -hmm. A YouTube video of a Duncanville High School student giving his history teacher a lesson has gone viral, and tonight has his district talking. If you would just get up and teach them instead of handing them a freaking packet, yo. There's kids in here who don't learn like that. Bye. They need to learn face to face. Bye. You want kids to come into your class? You want them to get excited yeah, for this? You, you gotta come in here. You gotta make them excited. You want a kid to change and start doing better? You gotta touch his freaking heart. Can't expect a kid to change if all you do is just tell him. Well, that video was posted this afternoon on our Facebook page, and Channel H's Jason Whiteley tracked down that young man for us tonight. Jason? I had dropped out for... Jeff Bliss says he has no regrets. No, not at all. I believe that somebody needed to say this. Get up and teach them. What he told his teacher in his world history class on Monday has now been seen around the world, gone viral. I want to see a teacher stand up and interact with the students, get involved, discuss, talk, question and keep deep into the, the subject. The 90-second video begins after the teacher at Duncanville High School kicks him out of her class. Bliss told us he initially questioned why students did not have more time to prepare for the STAR test, but then he unloads on her side, critical of her passing out worksheets rather than creating lively and engaging discussions in the classroom. You want them to get excited yeah, for this? You, you got to come in here. You got to make them excited. You want a kid to change and start doing better? You got to touch his freaking heart. Jeff's mother is a teacher. But the 18-year-old tells us he really discovered the value of education when he dropped out of school for a year. And what I soon realized was without that education, I'm not going to make any step forward into my future. Bliss says he didn't know a classmate recorded that rant. But he isn't embarrassed of what he said. Duncanville ISD says it is addressing this situation, and the district reiterated it wants both students and teachers to be engaging in the classroom. But the district says it thinks that That's Jeff Bliss that likely could have expressed his concern in a more appropriate way. Okay, dear colleagues, any reactions? What do you think about this video? What do you like? What do you not like? Any any reactions? Is it can this happen in Indonesia or can this happen in Philippines? Can this happen in other parts of the world? Do you, do you approve the child? Are they typing or are they responding? Let's, let me see. Okay, he agree. He is so brave, but saying it personally will be better. I think, I, I think yeah, I agree in a way. And some, sometimes I think confrontation is not the best idea. It can happen in all places. Some other the student has ultimately embraced all the issues in education. Yes, Rahat, good. There must be like in order to keep the teachers in good shape assembled. Again, it depends on the teacher. It depends on the culture, on the context. But I think our our students should be able to express their views. But maybe not in this way. But they should be able free to say, we do not want our students be afraid of us just because of respect. Sometimes they respect teachers too much. They cannot say anything. That's also not good. Mane, please. Yes, I agree. I agree. Man. agree with teachers need to be more engaging. I, yes, the problem was teacher was just sitting and doing nothing. Well, good, colleagues. Now, I looked at your reactions. Good. Now, this is the time I want to see, the, dear colleagues, what kind of methods do you know or do you use in the teaching? Let's see. Let's brainstorm ideas about teaching. When we talk about teaching, what kind of strategies, methods do you know or have you heard or do you use? Let's, let's start typing. I will just use group work so that no one can, can type it again. Group work, please. Honor-based approach, oh, that's interesting. Maybe somebody may write interactive teaching or active teaching or critical. Instead of can write concretely, corporate learning is a good one, but also write, yeah, that's a good one. Question and answer, question using pictures. That's excellent, I like. Callable cycle, either I don't know it, you, you, you should tell us. Peer learning, I, that's very good. A discussion, brainstorming, 
communicative approach. Leila probably is a language teacher. Yes. PDL, that's my favorite. Free writing, that's a writing class. Round table discussion, I like it. Partnership approach, I don't know what it is, but it sounds very fancy. Interactive games, TBL, I don't know TBL. Use games, I think I like it. Corporate learning, eclectic method is really combination. Games, 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 Gary, excellent. Akil, I, I have never heard of Akil. So therefore I must learn many things from you. TPR is a language, TPR is a total physical response, is really. Maybe, uh, I, my, it's my, one of my favorites because I teach Urdu, which is a Pakistani language, by using TPR. I could do it if we have time. At the end, I will teach everyone a few words of Urdu, Pakistani national language here. Let's move. Thank you. Colleagues, now, these are a few more methods that on, my, on your screen you can see. Warm up, brainstorming. You wrote some of them. Discussion, debate, group work, presentation, uh, case method. Inquiry, problem solving, play, games, use of ICT. These are all methods. Here, I use also PowerPoints, and today I am using PowerPoints. And PowerPoint slides have a lot of benefits, but but in some universities in North America. They are banning the use of PowerPoints. Can anyone explain to us why? Some universities are banning the use of PowerPoints. Anyone explains why? Not interactive, Shingas, yes, totally. Teacher is preparing slides at home, coming and reading the slides. It's boring. It is the, the teaching uh, arsenal of the teacher has become so rich, boring. Therefore, maybe, dear colleagues, these are two, there are two articles I found. Why don't you read on your own later on? I will see the slides to rest to. Look at the headings of these articles. Can you read them? I, I, I think this is, a, this is a first one is that, read the first one. Universities should ban PowerPoint. It makes students uh, stupid and professors boring. The second one is that uh, universities should ban PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint in higher education is ruining teaching. So therefore, uh, I'm saying that in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Indonesia, we must ban PowerPoint. Even today I'm using it. But what, what is my point is that we must use them skillfully and appropriately and not do it too much, overdo it. Uh, sometimes somebody can become so fascinated with the technology and is obsessed with the technology and for forgets about the students. So that's, that's my point is that we should not forget the students, dear colleagues. Well, now my another question, dear colleagues, you listed so many methods from your experience. Can you please write which method is the most effective method, which means that knowledge, the most knowledge, the most proportion of knowledge will remain with the students after using this method. Can you tell us from your inquiry-based, excellent, interactive, Uf Ufami? I think, yes, yes, Ufami. Okay, which method is most effective for you? Inquiry, master apprenticeship method. That's a very good one, Jenny. I don't know it, but I want to learn it. Creative, moving class. That I don't know, moving class. Is it a flip classroom or something, Rastu? Uh, lost interactive, <laughs> pair work, sometimes brainstorming, good. Jigsaw, go to field, Natalia, good. Going to field is also a good one. Class games, kinesthetic, excellent. Dear colleagues, I will just copy all the comments and I will read them on my own in order to understand further. If I missed anyone's idea, please don't be offended because I think the, the comments are coming so fast and many of them. Uh, brainstorming, yeah, good. Now, do you know, let me share with you one more research. These American scholars conducted research in which they tried to find out how much knowledge can be retained among students when you use different methods. According to them, let me share adults. According to them, the least effective is lecture. According to them, only 5% knowledge is retained. Now let's go forward. What do you think will be the next method? 
reading is more effective. Reading 10%. Now I will wait. Tell me what is reading when, when teachers assign reading at home and the students read, and then they come to class prepared. Then only 10% of knowledge is retained, unfortunately. In general, this is an aggregated score. Of course, some lecturers are very good, some lecturers are not good, but in, on average, 5% is retained in their knowledge. The next one is problem solving. Anyone knows? Writing? No, no, no. Next one is here. Yeah. Audiovisuals. What, what does that mean? What is audiovisual? Yes, when you assign the students to watch the video or listen to radio, 20%. That is much better. Audio, video and audio. But next one is demonstration. De demonstration, dear colleagues. When, for example, if you are a physics teacher, you are doing different experiments, students are just watching you and you are doing experiment. 20, 30% students can retain 30%. What do you think is better than demonstration? Anyone else better than demonstration? Somebody is writing practicing. Very good. The next one is according to their research, discussion. When students discuss knowledge with each other, their knowledge becomes stronger. The next one is practical work when the students themselves do something. Now, dear colleagues, I have the final one. According to their research, one method is the most effective, better than even practical work. What is it? Peer teaching? Can you explain that, Ori? I like this. Ori wrote a couple of times. What is peer teaching? Say more about it. Yes, Ori is right, but explain yeah. it more, please. So the best thing when a student mastering uh, something is when uh, that student is able to teach other students. Wonderful. Wonderful, Ori. And Gulmira is also writing, it is when you, you teach other people. Students learn something and they teach other people. How do you do it? You do it with a jigsaw when you give different texts to different students. Why do students learn more? Because they have a responsibility. If do not, they do not teach other students well, then you, they are, their friends will not learn. Therefore, they have a responsibility to learn. Okay, dear colleagues, let me hurry up now. Uh, uh, everyone knows about uh, Bloom. Maybe I'll finish by just with a, with a, oops. Has my screen gone? I will be skipping because I know it's almost one hour. Maybe I'll finish with a Global Teacher Award. Dear colleagues, I will just uh, finish with that, this one, and at the end, I will show the, the video from Japan. Does anyone know from, about this Global Teacher Award, Global Teacher Prize? As to the, do, do, do colleagues from Indonesia know about it? Okay, somebody is writing yes. Uh, somebody is, okay, maybe some people, uh, me not, me not. Okay, well, if you don't know, don't, know, don't worry. This is a new competition. This is a, this is a new competition that you can participate. Anyone can participate. No one will be stopping you from the participation. But what is this award? This Global Teacher Award is an international movement. This is, it, it, it takes place every year and they identify the most, the, 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 the best teacher globally. So this teacher prize is organized in order, uh, in order to elevate to increase the teacher status internationally. And uh, why teachers? Because teachers are really key factor for economic, social, political development of the country. And also teachers, we can help to reduce the prejudice, to reduce poverty, to reduce conflicts. This is our role as teachers. Therefore, this competition is held. And uh, yes, this is my colleague, uh, Ye, Ye Tut is writing uh, about the dollar award. Uh, this is this award. It has a slogan: "Every student deserves a good teacher." Therefore, we need to be the, the, we need to to prepare good teachers. The, as as my colleague from Indonesia has written, I think Indonesia, right? Global teacher takes this prize. Uh, this competition takes place since two thousand 
14, and the, the winner gets $1 million. And the, the competition, the final of the competition is held in Dubai. Here, you can see the top finalists, 50 finalists, they come from different parts of the world. It, it took place in 2016. Uh, and every year it's held. You can see your own country, whether anyone is from there. I see one person is from Myanmar, one person from Singapore was there. Uh, one is uh, three people from Pakistan. Is it Pakistan? I think you can see. Oh, here. These are the top, uh, top 10 finalists. They came from India, Kenya, USA, Kingdom, United Kingdom, Finland, Palestine, Japan, etc. These are the top finalists. And then among them in 2016, this lady, Hanan al Hrup, she was the winner and she got 1 million. But after that, they were different winners. But let's see, what is the evaluation criteria? I, I just need to share this evaluation criteria because I really like, especially I like evaluation criteria number six that I will stop a little bit when I, when I come to that. Number one, they, they, they evaluate whether this candidate is using effective instructional strate strategies that can be replicable to other, other contexts. International. So they want to see the, the teaching methods. The second one, they want to see that if uh, the, these innovative practices are being used, which will be challenging and improving the community. So that can, they, they also look at it. The third one is that they want to look at it if whether the candidate students are making any progress in their learning, like a local test or any kind of a measurement, are they learning? Are they improving their learning? And also they want to, to see where the teacher is impacting the community beyond the classroom, like uh, giving examples by being a model of excellence in the profession, whether the villages or community members, where they value this teacher, or they, everyone will think, oh, this teacher is lousy. Why my child is being taught by this teacher? And then, oh, this is number five, I really like. Please look at them. It helps children to become global citizens. Why I like it? Because nowadays the world is becoming so divided. We, we find so many reasons to find that we are different. Religious difference, ethnic, or even between the ethnically, like we, we have North and South, West and East, all kinds of divisions, different villages, different tribes, uh, races. But, but I, think, I think this Global Teacher Award looks at the candidate who is making a significant impa impact to bring different divided communities together. Is he really playing role? Is he or she playing role in, like if two communities in the, in the village, if, if, they're, if they're fighting all the time, is this teacher playing a role so that this, they, these two rival communities are coming together? So this is a very important top, uh, from my point of view, that sometimes we might be teaching ethno chauvinism. We might be teaching maybe nationalist idea that only, for example, my nation is the greatest. But how about living with other, our neighbors? In peace, at least. You don't need to love other people, but you need to be able to live with them, coexist with them, with respect. That's the important thing we need as educators we need to provide. Okay, maybe this is one improving teaching professionals through helping to, to raise the bar of teaching. I think the best practices teacher recognition from governments, national teaching organizations. So they have these seven criteria. And uh, you know what? 2019, this guy from, I think Kenya, Peter, Peter Tabishi from Kenya has become a winner. And these are his words. Let me just read it because this is, this is one of the final slides. He says, seeing my learners grow in knowledge, skills and confidence is my greatest joy in teaching. When they become resilient, creative and productive in the society, I get a lot of satisfaction for I act as their, as their greatest destiny enabler and key that unlocks their potential in the most exciting manner. This is Peter Tabisha says, by the way, and this is the final winner this year, just India, which is very close to us, South Asia, this guy has become a winner, Ranjit Singh Disale. But I will share you a very interesting story 
about him. He, this guy actually promotes girls' education in rural India. I know, I don't know. Do we have any participants from India today, Rastu? I'm afraid we don't have it. <laughs> don't have, it's okay. But how is it in Indonesia? Let me pose this question. Let, let me pose this question to everyone. Imagine, well, dear colleagues, this is just a hypothetically. I, I want all of you to have a lot of money, but imagine if, if you don't have a lot of money and you have one son and one daughter and you can only educate one of them, send to a very good school, which one do you want to send it? to send to this good school because you don't have a lot of money, imagine. Your son or, da or daughter? Can anyone write, please, answer? Daughter, daughter, very good, daughter. Son, Shingo says son, my son, my son. So ideas become divided, daughter, daughter, son. I know maybe who is writing son because daughter will go away, get married and become somebody's family, right? I want to hear someone from Indonesia or from Far East Asia, why would you send your daughter to school? Because I know in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, we send our daughters to school because I, we have some strong reasons. But how about in Indonesia? Why would you send uh, Damayati? I am just giving a difficult task that maybe if you don't have a lot of money, just, just making it difficult, difficult choice for you. Can anyone tell why would you send your daughter to school from Indonesia? Rastu, can, can, identify, can you identify anyone, any colleague from Indonesia? No? Can, daughter can teach son, somebody's daughter, be, because she will teach her children. Oh, I like it. Nur Jamal is right. Because she can, to, she can teach her children and family. Well, yeah, well, yeah. first of all, I don't want to differentiate between son and daughter. But uh, what I believe here, uh, women is the most powerful, let's say, how do you mm -hmm. say, <laughs> human in order to change the world here. So if we educate women, women mm -hmm. that that is let's say the best idea to get you know the world for a better one that's yeah. what i believe that's why i choose daughter but i don't i don't mean to differentiate between son and daughter personally yeah. <laughs> i agree with you and i think i, I forgot somebody i think it was it gandhi who said that if you educate a girl you educate the whole village i think it was gandhi okay now i have a i have a question for you please read the second question he won one million dollar. What did he do with this one million dollar immediately? Can anyone tell me? He is providing education in the most remote areas to the girls, but maybe he will help later on to those girls, definitely. But immediately when he got money, he did something. Immediately, online. Open the schools, no, 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 immediately. Improve education eventually. Open the school later on, but immediately, he, what he did, he do. In no, 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 dear colleagues, you are you. No one can find it so far. Oh well, yes, somebody wrote. I think I missed that one. Who wrote? Uh, rest, rest to help, please. Gave half of the money to someone. Somebody wrote. Maybe can that person write, write again? Who did Analin, this? Analin Mongol. Yes. Who who did he give this money? Help some. No. 50% of the money he gave it, he gave it immediately. To whom? Gave the half and to why? the other teachers, I think. To other teachers? Which teachers? Other teachers? Which teachers? Second, second runners? Yes, second runners. Yes, you're right. He, this guy from India, only teacher can do it. Only teacher immediately. Half a million dollars he gave. Oh, it's not here. He gave to the, remember there were 10, 10 finalists. He, gave, he distributed to nine finalists. Why? He said that I won today, but these nine teachers are equally winners. You see, only a teacher can be so generous. No one else, I don't think anyone else can be. This guy was so gracious. Then he just said, imagine half a million dollars. He gave to nine teachers from different countries just because they were also in the final. So look at this, other money, he will also give the charity, but that was his immediate action. Well, dear colleagues, I will stop here. Maybe I will ask Rastu to, to, show, to show our final video and we will stop.
This is this is about Japan, Japanese students. Sorry, uh, Mr. Duishan, you are unmute. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. I know some of you have already watched this video before, but can you comment on the role of the teacher? This is an amazing teacher. What did the teacher do? What? What? What do you, how, what did you know, notice about the teacher as a motivator, support, excellent, encouraging, inspiring, very good. What else? Let me ask you a question. Why did the teacher not lower the bar? Motivate until gain the goal, trust. Motivate and trust. Some, some teachers will say, okay, he cannot jump. Let's lower the bar for him because he obstacle for him. He is too weak, but this teacher didn't do it. This teacher has a very high expectation of all his students, but also he has faith. I agree with, with Utami. This teacher has a faith, but also look how this teacher is using other students to support. I have seen some, some schools where students are competing competing for learning, competing for grades. But why do you need to compete? We need to instill our, among our young people sense of collaboration, sense of happiness when somebody achieves a success. You see, when this child was, has jumped, everyone in the hall was happy. The kids came to support. It's not like, okay, if he jumps, then I, then I will be in the second place. No, we need to create this kind of a sense in which we become happy when other students are succeeding. So this is what I think inspiring teaching is really giving faith, expect, raising expectations, giving faith to our students I, by using my, my colleagues' words. But also this is setting a good model that learning is not about competing. It's not like you get the excellent mark, 
only if other people get poor mark, you get excellent mark. No, you learn together. You just, you become a team so that you become happy when other students are learn, also learning. With this, my colleagues, I will put a full stop here. Uh, title of the video, uh, Christina, I don't know video, but I, I think I found it in the video link we can share, but it was Japanese uh, boy jumping obstacle or something. You can just Google it and you can find it. All right, dear colleagues, I am done. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to respond. Rastu, we cannot hear you. Yes, actually we have got, uh, so far I, I just received uh, one question here. So let me just try to... Earlier there was question, but I think it went up, above up, up the thread, so I cannot find it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I have we, just collected we can, here. We can ask them to, to type it again. Uh, okay, this is it. Would be appreciate My branch is method. That's why I'm saying. Oh. So here we go. I've got just one question so far. We've got uh, Jeb Bargeldi by Ramos, Mr. Jeb mm -hmm. Bargeldi by Ramos. Sir, yeah. I want to ask a question if you would be available to answer it. I'll appreciate your answers. My branch is math education. That's why I, I'm so interested about the way to teaching mathematics without using PowerPoint. I'm also agree, I am also agree that the usage of PowerPoint is less effective. Maybe you would like to say what was, what is your suggestions or advice here? Thank you okay. in advance. Thank you very much. Uh, Je Jeff Bargal Gilly. Sorry if I pronounce incorrectly. I, I agree with you. In, that, in I, I, I said that we should not overemphasize and use PowerPoint too much. I can hear echo myself for some reason. Uh, yes, but I, I don't say that we should ban the use of PowerPoint. PowerPoint can still be used because it has, it has a lot of, like some learners are really visual. They learn best when they see it. But, Teaching mathematics, even without PowerPoint in the past, people were able to teach them like Socratic method that's being less used. Just without PowerPoint, sit together with a child and pose a question. And one question, one problem we have with the power, with, the, with, the, with the teaching mathematics, I don't know how in your context, uh, often traditional mathematics is taught in this way. Teacher writes a formula, then does some exercises and then drills them and then have their students to do it. I think that's not effective because you just give the formula and have the students doing drills without understanding. There is a concept called mathematical understanding. So what we need to develop is that mathematical understanding. Maybe have the students with a problem posed method, give them problem, students need to learn to, 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 to investigate it and then it is best when students come to the formula at the end themselves. That will be more meaningful. But unfortunately, we are so in a hurry. To, we, what mathematics teachers, they do is that they come to the class and say, today our topic is fraction and they write on the board and then they give some examples and the students without any understanding, they start drilling. That's my issue. So good luck with mathematics teaching. It's one of the best subjects as any other subject. Enjoy it and just let the students enjoy your subject. That's the important thing. Okay, Rasta? Yes, we have got another question here. Maybe I can just write, uh, read out, write read it directly. Uh, I'm going yeah, I'm, I'm to read it directly. How can we motivate students who give up before trying? Uh, yes. I think, I think this is a, I can see this. The question is from Winda. Yes, yes. Winda. Uh, I think Winda, that's, the, that's, that's really a problem. We need to find out when this, when the child uh, dropped, because often child drops because teacher may have ignored, teacher may have forgotten, or even at home, the child has very low expectation. Maybe even parents always tell, oh, you don't know anything, you don't know anything, and children will become accustomed to that. We need to really raise their expectation from the child saying, okay, now you can do it. My favorite phrase is about Mozart's mother. Mozart's mother used to wake every day Mozart by saying that, get up my genius. The great things are waiting for you. That's the important thing. But also uh, there is a concept 
uh, by Vygotsky called zone of proximal development. Zone of proximal development. Unfortunately, many students drop out, drop out from their learning because teacher will be teaching only the best students. Because teacher strategy, teacher will look at three or four students just in front of her and then starts working with them. Others just the knowledge goes beyond them. But I think that's why this, there's a concept called differentiated instruction, which helps every child to excel. So I would use, say that maybe Winda explore ideas of differentiated instruction and, and also make learning, make if child is making a mistake or if child doesn't understand something, we, sometimes we teachers make the child guilty for that. But in one of the schools in Nursultan, I like that there is a table in the classroom where any child who didn't understand the concept can sit without any, any hesitation and teacher can come and help the child. And that, 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 destroy, that destroys the image that if you understand, you are a good student. If you don't understand, you are a bad student. Sometimes even teacher says, does everyone understand? And students respond in chorus. Yes, we understood because not, if child says, I don't understand, teacher will say, how can you not understand? Then teach students don't want so, to say it. So that's why Vinda, that's an excellent topic. We need to continue discussing on that. Thank you. Yeah, I think I saw some more questions, Rastu. Yes, we go. Uh, let me try to share my screen again because it's a bit uh, long. Okay, let's okay. see here. Let's read it and then... Yep. What is the strength policy of education in your country and we need to adapt in Indonesia? I mean the strength of education policy. John Sinaga. <laughs> okay, John, thank you. Maybe maybe close it because I think there is an additional sound is coming from somewhere when I think echo is coming. John, thank you very good, very much for this question. I think uh, in, I can speak for, both, for two countries. For Kyrgyzstan, where I am originally from, I say that Kyrgyzstan has got one of the best uh, uh, university admission standardized testing, which is similar to SAT. Uh, it's not for memorization. Students really need to develop, to demonstrate their logic and the uh, critical thinking in order to pass this test. It's called National Scholarship Testing. Uh, and it is conducted not by the ministry, but by the independent testing center so that there is no conflict of interest. No one from the government can make a phone call saying that, okay, my nephew has got a very poor mark. You need to increase it. So there is like this kind of a uh, protection for that test. I think it, it works quite well because this test in Kyrgyzstan is allowing some, of course, there is still corruption, but this test is really helping people from lower social income families from rural areas also to get opportunity to study in some of the best universities. From Kazakhstan, I think there are some excellent reforms recently taking place, but one of them I can say that in Kazakhstan, inclusive education, Kazakhstan is taking very seriously inclusive education. And, uh, and I think there are policies are being developed on inclusive education and practices. And I think, of course, there, there is still a long way to go, but I think there are excellent policies are being developed. My colleagues from Kazakhstan can respond on this much better. But also one more thing in Kazakhstan, I think I really, I like what I like is that there is a very good uh, prof teacher's professional development center at the private level as well as government level. And teachers more or less are getting acquainted with the latest ideas of teacher development, like a also lesson study that was created in Japan, for example, Kazakhstan teachers know it and use it very well, or critical thinking, I, uh, oh, sorry, criterion based assessment all the ideas are being implemented in Kazakhstani schools. So these are the ideas that I really think maybe Indonesia might be already doing, I don't know. This, so, But my colleagues from Kazakhstan, I think who are sitting here, they'll be happy probably if we can, can get in Dutch to speak in the, in, the, in the future. All right, uh, that's really nice. Uh, now let's just go for the next questions, which is the fourth okay. one. Okay. okay, let me try to share the screen again. Okay, here we go. So we have got, uh, could you give some tips for teacher on how to enhance students' independence and motivate them to be proactive? By Gabriela Maria, thank you. Uh, 
Gabriela. Tough question. Tough. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> Why is it difficult? Because we are teachers. We want to gain, to keep the control. We don't want our students to be naughty, unruly, lack of discipline. We want them to behave. But on the other hand, we want them to be proactive. It's a, it's a dilemma. But, but students, I think sometimes some of our colleagues do uh, like too much. They, when they want, they, when they demand the respect, they go overboard and they do, they do over controlling. They control their students too much. They do not even let our, their students to think beyond the out of box. That's not good. What I think maybe simply, simple answer would be to start with really, we, we change our own notion that, okay, now myself, I am a teacher. I don't need to know everything. Sometimes we pretend that we know everything because if we don't know something in mathematics, our students will say, or parents will say, oh, this teacher doesn't know anything. So sometimes we pretend that we know everything. And if a child asks a question, we say, oh, sorry, uh, I know it, and, but you, I want you to do a homework or whatever. We just hide that we don't know something. Maybe accepting that learning is, so we teachers, we don't need to learn to know everything, but we, we can give our students idea that well, teacher can also learn together with you. Let's learn together. And giving more tasks to students, real tasks. For example, sometimes university students just copy their assignments from internet. Why? Because our assignments are like that. Maybe we can inspire our students really to find out to something new which is not available in internet. They can use that knowledge in internet, but they need to create, like Bloom's taxonomy also shows that the, the highest in the pyramid of Bloom's taxonomy is the creating. It was, in the past, it was, it was uh, evaluation. But now, if our students can create something, that's, we, our tasks should be really meant so, so that students can enjoy by producing something new, by creating something new. Maybe with this, and maybe also, maybe just we, sh we, should, not, we should not feel bad if our students are challenging us. It's OK, and I think uh, maybe just Maybe on the other side of the balance, sometimes we say, okay, now I need to be strict, otherwise my students become very noisy. So maybe it's okay. Maybe just give the students idea that it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to learn together. It's okay now. Teacher also may not know something. Well, we, we learn together with our students. That's okay. Thank you, Rasta. All right, everybody, maybe just one more question here. I'm sorry to, uh, to say it because uh, the time is going to be over. Just let me mm -hmm. try to give you the last questions here. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Sir, I'm a primary grade three teacher. I want to ask you how to make the students stay focused during online learning. And how many minutes the effective time for the children to study on their screen by Cedric Aprianto? <laughs> that's, that's a, I think that's, a, that's another difficult question. Today, these teachers are really, <laughs> maybe my excuse can be, a, I am a university professor. I don't know these primary kids. No, no, I think, that, let me try. Let me try to respond to this question. It's, I think it's a very serious question. Uh, uh, grade three students, what is their age? Rasko? Um, maybe 10, nine to 10, nine okay. years old. Yeah, I think, I think maybe, maybe at this age, at this age, and maybe sometimes we, we do, I think this online learning, uh, online learning, at, you, attention span of the, of the learners is about 20 minutes only. And I don't know how I was able to keep over 300 uh, participants today, but attention span of the learners is 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we need to switch the activity. We, you cannot keep for, for so long. But in online learning, it's even more difficult because, because there is no this aura of face-to-face -face learning and there is a screen and uh, there is a problem to the eye and the, for focusing, it's difficult. Maybe. Maybe I would, I would suggest to my colleagues to have maybe, maybe 10, like a 10 minute act, activity. I don't know, this, this is just, I am thinking of it, what I would do, 10 minute activity. Uh, 
online, which is synchronous. And I hope that everyone in Indonesia is using this, the words synchronous and asynchronous, right? Uh, sometimes what, what teachers initially everywhere in the world, particularly in Central Asia, they, they, they thought that online learning is forcing the kid to sit 40 minutes in front of the computers. That is impossible, dear colleagues. You cannot keep a child for 40 minutes in front of the computer. Number one, it is very expensive. Number two, it is dangerous for, it is, it is uh, negative to the health of the child and to yourself. And uh, number three is pedagogically not very appropriate to keep people 40 minutes of the class because 40 minutes, one class, then you have five classes, which means 200 minutes, 200 minutes in front of the computer, it is not advisable. Therefore, I would just suggest the teachers to have what's called asynchronous learning also. If I had 40 minutes, I would divide something like this. Yes, for 10 minutes, 10 minutes of class for online, then maybe 15, 20 minutes. I don't know. This is my idea for offline. I don't know what, what do you call it, asynchronous, which is you give a group task or do something else. Then at the end, come back after about five, 10 minutes. So this is, I would, I would try not to force the children in front of the, I would give them more assignments like in the pairs, in groups, so that stay away from the computer to do it. Otherwise, if you force the people to sit the whole day in front of the computer, which unfortunately some university professors, some school teachers did in Kyrgyzstan, in Kazakhstan, unfortunately at the beginning, that's not advisable, that's not good, that's very expensive, and that's bad for health. So that's why I would suggest to really think about your methodology, how many times to keep in front of the computer, and what tasks to give away from computer, and how to bring them back again to share their learning. So be innovative, you, you develop your own strategy, but be really creative, innovative, and develop your own effective strategy, please. Okay. All right, thank you so much for the question and answers session here. So <laughs> what to say here, really big thanks to Dr. Duishan. Duishan, that was really amazing. Uh, I can even, you know, uh, ask another questions here because the time is uh, running out here. So we are going to just uh, briefly watch a video from Eduversal for a minute here, everybody. Let's just go for it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Now I'm sending you the link for you know a universal universal uh, channels. We have got uh, Telegrams and also YouTube channels, so you can keep in touch with us. See in the next uh, you know events, upcoming events, so we can just meet again, right? Okay. Thank you so much. Here I'm going to close the session. Okay, but let's just see here, right? Uh, the link here. <laughs> okay, everyone, just let's go for a closing session here. Thank you so much uh, about the webinar here. We have got a priceless, how to say here, experience. I don't want to say like this, but this is really amazing. 
and also let's just go for uh, you know summarize this one we have got the myth about teaching also and also what is that the the the, the generosity of the teacher who won the one million dollars so you know he just shared with the other finalists always just amazing and also what was the interesting one uh the questions answered which you know just make meet us <laughs> how to say petrified okay thank you so much for dr duishan thank you too to participants hopefully we can meet again in the upcoming events thank you so much i'm here still see you next time <laughs>